Let's, let's sit that, sit with that for just a moment. Yes. Powerful, soul stirring truth. Spirit lead me. Thank you. Thank you for opening us up. Thank you. Well, good morning, Renaissance Unity. I would say happy Sunday. This is the first cold Sunday. And I'm going to say happy Sunday anyway, because it's, we live in Michigan, and this is what we expect. But not so soon. Not so soon. Well, let's get started. Here we are, four days away from Thanksgiving. And you were given a couple of things when you walked in. A orange card. It's a prayer card for you to share at your Thanksgiving dinner or feast. And you also received two index cards. Don't write on them. Hold on to them. I'm going to tell you what you will do with those at the end of our talk. So I want to get started with something. Don't normally do this, but I'm going to this, this time. I'm going to tell you something. But I have to do a disclaimer. I am an animal lover. I have a cat. I'm a fur mama, and um, I have a fur baby. And so I love cats, so let me just do this disclaimer first. I'm going to tell you this quick joke. There's a young preacher. His name was John, and he was given this pet parrot. And this pet parrot had a bad attitude. He was rude, obnoxious. He had the worst vocabulary. Out of this bird's mouth flew every kind of profanity, anything obnoxious, and it was just horrible. And John was embarrassed because he was what? A minister. So he laid hands on him, anointed his head with oil, and did everything he could to make this bird behave. And finally, he said to him, you know what? You just need to chill. The bird re responded and said, you need to chill. John got a little upset. The devil made him do it. He took the bird and he flung it in the freezer, closed the door. He said, I need to chill. No, you need to chill. He put the, the bird in the freezer and the bird protested. And you could hear this noise going on. And finally, he got quiet and concerned. John opened the door and out walked the bird and perched on his arm. And the bird began to apologize profusely. I'm sorry. Everything that John had taught him how to say nicely, he finally gave it to him. And he went on and he says, I'm remorseful. I do apologize. I fully intend to do everything right. I'll correct my rude behavior. I'll watch my nasty mouth. Do you forgive me? John was taken aback. He said, okay, that's fine. And the bird, he was just about to ask the bird, well, what changed your attitude? The bird looked at him, him and said, may I ask you a question? He said, sure. He said, what did the turkey do? All right, that's a joke. Let me do it again. What did the turkey do? <laughs> Got it. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm not a good joke teller, but it, you'll catch that in a minute. Where are my um, Android people? Where are you? Got an Android? Hold it up proudly, proudly Androids. All right. All right, where are my iPhone folk? Where are you? Hold that, wave it in the air like you just don't care. All right. Well, let me share something with you. I um, have been receiving these nice little messages from my car company. And we all know that our phones are what? What are our phones now? What do they operate on? Can, do you know? 5G? 5G? 5G. And so this company has been sending me this gentle reminder. Your current system is going out of date in December. It'll no longer be compatible, but you have options. 
And of course, my first option was to do what? Buy a new car. Mm -mm. The sec second option was they sent me a little card that said that if you ever need OnStar, if you ever need an emergency, just call this number. I said, okay. Or my third option was to discontinue the service. You all guess what I, I'm going to do. Well, in essence, what he was telling me, this letter, because they it were gentle reminders that I needed to upgrade. I needed to be a 5G receiver in order to live and exist in this new environment, to have this on-star benefit. But I just decided, mm, we'll see. So here we are, four days away from Thanksgiving, from the football game, preparing to gather with friends and family and to celebrate. Celebrate like none other. If you all recall, we were not in place this time last year, were we? No. You were watching us by way of, of, it, uh, of um, Zoom. This year, this Thanksgiving, is time for us to pause and think about and be grateful for what we have. Thankful for our families, thankful for our friends, thankful for our children, thankful for our job, our home, just thankful. And it may not be perfect, and it may not be even what we want. There may be some challenges, some circumstances, some things that have happened over the year that has caused us some pain, caused us to be sad. But I'm learning that even in the midst of our challenges, we want to be thankful. So, this morning I want to talk to you about the five G's, the perfect ingredient of living a life of thanksgiving. Hashtag, hashtag thanks for living. So, what are the ingredients for a five G Thanksgiving? What are the perfect ingredients? The first ingredient is God. Several years ago, I was a um, teacher in youth and family ministry, and we had this lesson about God. And we made this big old hand, and we said, put God first. And every time I went into that room, I had an opportunity every Sunday to look at that big hand to remind me that, to put God first. And that was the habit every Sunday, to pass that hand. And as I learned that when we put God first, put God be first before any challenges, before any conditions arise, things will be well. So that's the first ingredient. We're going to put God first. When life is filled with blessings, when life is filled with challenges, we're going to put God first. God first with our faith, and then we'll put our faith in man. God first with our directions, and then we will ask man for directions. God first with our love, and then God, then man. God first. Because when we put God first, we feel only love. See, God first is the powerful promise, a truth that is felt in our hearts. My first words when I get out of, when I wake up, I don't get out of bed right away, is thank you, God. Thank you, God. And then I move into my prayer and meditation. Our first ingredient is what? God. Second ingredient is gathering. And in Hebrews 10.25, it says, Do not forsake the gathering, the assembly of ourselves and with one another, because it's in the assembling, it's in the gathering that we can lift one another up, support one another. 
the scripture, it's a powerful one. How do we gather? How do we gather? We come here on Sunday. That's a gathering. We come here together, kindred spirits, bringing our collective consciousness, energies, and thoughts. And we assemble. We assemble as the men of, well, I don't, men of today, the women of radiance, our mastermind groups, our Wednesday night prayer calls, our family events, our celebration, our Monday night meditations. That's how we assemble. Assembling, gathering provides us a sense of belonging. Somewhere I read that there is power. There is power in the gathering as it lifts us. It brings us joy and peace and comfort and positive thoughts and hope. There is power in assembling, gathering. It inspires us. It gives us joy. What's our second ingredient? What's our first ingredient? Next ingredient. Our next ingredient is gratitude. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything be grateful. Give thanks. Gratitude is a perception. It's the realization of life that no matter the conditions, the circumstances, we affirm our highest good and we call forth what we want to see manifest and unfold in our lives. Gratitude is our ability to feel and express gratefulness and appreciation. Anne Lindhort, New Thought Leader, wrote that gratitude is an aspect of God. And since God is everywhere present, it is available to us always. You know, we're on a spiritual journey, a journey to expand, to grow, to grow into our fullness of our divinity. And you know what we need is already in us. It's coded in our spiritual DNA. Gratitude is our mission, our purpose here now to experience it at a deeper, more profound and esoteric level. We're here to expand our understanding. Gratitude, gratefulness. There, Reverend Anicia has a, a response if you ask her. Reverend Anicia, how are you doing today? How do you respond? Great and grateful. Say that. Great and grateful. Gratitude, it heals. It, it benefits us by improving our health, our immune system. It expands our capacity to forgive, and, and it heightens our spirituality and gives us the ability to see something bigger than ourselves. What is that? Gratitude. So it's, what's first? God. Second, gratitude. Gratitude is a consciousness that we can turn on and off. I'll say that again. Gratitude is a consciousness that we can turn on and off based on the circumstances. But, you know, gratitude is a sense of well-being. And that we know that deep down inside at the core of us, that when things are going wrong, all is well. Because we have that connection, that oneness, the allness to the power, a source greater than ourselves. And when I think of gratitude, I'm reminded of Paul in the Bible and Esther and, and the Israelites. All of them had an opportunity to experience Gratitude. Gratitude. That's our third ingredient. Our next ingredient is giving. What is it? 
Luke 6.38 says, To give and it shall be given to you. Give and it shall be given to you. There's a song we sang in, in children's ministry. I won't sing it. <laughs> give and it's given back to you. Give and it's given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over and back for good measure. Give and it's given back to you. The important, there is a, a, a combination. It's the giving and receiving. Because if you are a recipient, the other part of it is giving. Giving of your time, your talent, your treasures for humanity. And when you give, it's said that you increase your supply. Your supply. A few Mondays ago, I had an opportunity to serve citizens who no longer have a permanent home of their own. And I watched every person in the room be a giver and a receiver. And from that experience, I discovered ways that I could support the program. So I envisioned how I would support the displaced citizens. My prayer is like the prayer of Jabez, O oh Lord, enrich my territory. Show me how I can be of greater service. That's going to be part of our challenge this week. How you can be of greater service. You know, together as a community, we have supported agencies. We did our sock drive, our underwear. And we do things individually. Give, and it's given back to you. The Bible says that for when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me, giving me time. What's our fourth one? Giving. Last one. Grace. Second Corinthians 12 and 9 says, My grace is sufficient, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. How many of you have ever had a time when you were just tired? And whatever happened, it literally brought you to your knees. I'm not a boxer, but, you know, I watch. And you, you know, it's the right punch, left punch, the uppercut. And you can stand and stagger, but the one that brings you to your knees is what? The gut punch. How many of us have had that gut punch? And it literally took the air, the breath away. Grace. My grace is sufficient. The grace metaphysically is God's favor. It's mercy. It's God's plan and process. It is a higher level of consciousness. And when we enter into that consciousness by faith, we live in this space of grace. Reverend Margot Ford professed that grace is an upward pull of the universe, lifting us to heights of divine nature. God's grace, God's grace for us is for us to experience and express completely. God wants to express completely through us and as us. God's grace is so great that you would never really feel or experience the harvest of error. But you would definitely always reap more good than you sow. Ephesians 2 and 9 reads, For grace you have saved me, and through faith you have saved me. And this is my own doing. It is the gift of of God. I had an opportunity 
to be graceful. Brett knows about this. While I was working on my, my talk yesterday, and I generally sit in a space in my dining room with my, my laptop computer. I decided not to sit there. I was in my she shed. How many of the ladies, how many of you have a she shed? You know, it's, it's filled with all the wonderful things that make you comfortable. And that's where I was with my laptop. I heard this boom, and my house literally shook. And I heard tigers screeching. I got up. I went to the front door, to the front window to see what was going on. I didn't see anything. I saw a package on the porch, and I said, okay. But then I, I noticed that my neighbor had called me. So I went back downstairs, and he was there. Somehow he had managed to run into my house. It's okay. No structure damage, but there is some damage. Now, I could have been really angry, said some things that probably were nice, but I decided that there, I would be graceful to give him grace, the kind of grace that spirit gives us when we mess up, when we forget, when we forget the allness in our connection. So I said, okay, we'll talk about it later. You have that opportunity as well to give grace. So this Thanksgiving season, this time for being grateful, this time for being thankful, I gave you five ingredients. What's first? God. What's second? What's third? What's fourth? And what's fifth? grace. That is your five G's. Not the five G's on your telephone, you know, those little bars, but your five G's to live a thankful life. There are two branches of gratitude. One is gratefulness and one is thanksgiving. And both fill you up. Because it's the connection, the allness, the oneness of God that is in this universe and in you. And so if we practice daily before we, when we awake and when we get, before we get out of bed, if we say, thank you, God, we're acknowledging the God that is in this world and the God that is in us. As I get ready to close my talk, I want you to think about something. I gave you two cards, and this is your challenge. Your challenge this week is to write down on one card five things that you are grateful for. The other card is five ways that you can give, five ways that you are going to support, and then take them and share them with an accountability partner. Tell someone that this is what I'm going to do. I'm grateful, and these are the things that I'm going to do to share. And you don't have to tell me about it. If you like, you can call me. I mean, you can email me and let me know. Reverend Wilma, this is what I did. This is how I, I shared. We all come here for a divine purpose. Each one of us has a curriculum. No one can do what you have been anointed and appointed to do. The five Gs, the perfect ingredient of life perfect ingredients for living a life of thanksgiving. The ingredients that you already know about. Today was just a reminder. Take this time that we have 
we're sharing now and reflect. Reflect on your life and those things that have occurred, some painful, some joy. And think about where you are right now. I think Brett talked about it. Do you want to go back or do you want to be right here? All of us had some challenges, and I, I won't talk about what caused the challenge, but we did for the last two years, and life was different. It was incredibly different. It was the most disruptive time in our lives. But here you sit. Here you sit. And it may not be perfect. And it may not be all that you want it to be, but you're here. So in the midst of what may be a challenge, what may be a storm, I invite you to say thank you. Thank you. Find the great. Find the good in the most challenging situations. It has been challenging for all of us, but the love of the Spirit of God has moved us through those challenges, and here we sit since April. We continue our online service. We continue to be a community. So my words are simple. Thank you. Thank you. Renaissance Unity, it has been my pleasure to share this journey with you. For some of you, you know that my journey has been 25 years. 25 years I started in children's ministry. I left children's ministry and decided I wanted to be a certified spiritual educator. I then became a licensed unity teacher. And spirit said, nope, not done. And I was ordained in 2020 by way of Zoom because no one was meeting in person. So I say thank you. Thank you, sweet spirit. Thank you, community, for all your support, your love, your energy, and for being an amazing part of what we do. It's just going to get better. When we stand in that truth and when we use those five ingredients and when we utter thank you, the universe opens up and gives us more. Don't forget about your homework. Just because it's Thanksgiving doesn't mean you don't have to do it. Get your homework done. Reverend Glenn always gives you a challenge, and so I continue. That is your challenge. Thank you again, and happy Thanksgiving. All right. What's our vision? What's your vision for 2022?